Um, that certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I want I want to shift gears. And another thing that I think is maybe a little challenging for people <laughs> is you know, fundamentals, you know, what, what are fundamentals? How do we teach quote unquote fundamentals playing basketball? Uh, are you growing up? That's what I heard. You got to learn the fundamentals, fundamentals, but fundamentals. Can you teach them? Maybe Adam, you can start with this one. Can you teach them not in isolation? Are you able to teach them in context? If you do, you know, what are some of your thoughts on how to teach quote unquote fundamentals of basketball um, maybe to a, a newer or a younger athlete. Oh, I'm surprised you're coming to me instead of Alex over this one. I mean, but uh, you, you go, you both maybe. Really, the thing the where I, <laughs> well, the thing where I always start with whenever I even heard this, and I remember when <laughs> Alex put out that tweet that really stirred up some controversy, and he ended up even writing a blog post about it, which was fa- fantastic, but. To me, like whenever this was ever brought up to me, ever brought up to me, I go, uh, my, my simple response was a question. This is, my, I guess, my, my, my counseling and my master's in sports psychology background is just I just post questions and I more or less let them figure it out is where did that fundamental come from? How did that emerge was, is essentially the question. So using that as the framework, I would just how what is like the minimum effective dose per se where maybe we have to scale equipment to make to allow this skill to happen that looks as much like the game as possible the full game as possible do we have to make smaller balls do we have to need a wider playing area do do we need um more opponents less opponents All, all these things that come into play but well, you just have to be willing to just to scale down that information to meet it where they're at. Sure. I mean, yeah, we could You give them a full basketball. Maybe they can only dribble in place at, at a certain point. But that's that's a pretty limited scope of what's actually available. Now, obviously, if certain people only have a certain amount of resources on that. I completely understand that. But I think we need to think outside of the box and not just be so narrow minded about it and. Yeah, for me, the fundamental thing is, like I said, I just keep coming back to the question of, well, where did the fundamentals come from? What we're actually doing is all we're doing is the only fundamental we have to work with. And the only thing that we should really concern ourselves with is the rule book. What can we play with with that? That's the ultimate game we're playing against here, because other than that, it's just it's wide open. I think I heard a. Ian Renshaw or maybe it was even Keith Davis talking about you're actually playing again for golfing. You're actually playing against the course designer. You're not playing against anybody else. And I think that's an interesting way to look at basketball. If you say, all right, these are the, this is the rule book. This is what we're actually working with here. All right. Not with what, not with what a coach says or what that player does or anything like that. This is all you need to reference and then just go from there. But I think as far as younger kids and stuff like that, where it's like they quote unquote need the fundamentals, I would say just scale back and make it easier for them to play the full game. Oh, great stuff, Adam. I think, so I firstly, I, I don't use the word fundamentals. It's banned from my vocabulary. I just use the word solutions, obviously abbreviation from functional movement solutions. Just, I just talk about solutions. Um, you know, it's coaches are basically married to fundamentals. They're like some precious thing. It's like a, a sacred cult of fundamentalists. And um, it's, I understand why I really do. Um, but the, the problem is as soon as, you know, co- coaches have it inherently ingrained that they believe that players have to be able to have these supposed fundamentals down before, um, being able to do more complex things. And, um, it's, it's just obviously completely inherently not the case at all. So, um, You know, obviously what I speak about, even with beginners, I I think what I get a lot is people, coaches say, yeah, but you're working with really good players. That's one of the best young players in Europe. I can't do what you do with beginners. But no, definitely not. You absolutely can. I think it's even more effective with beginners because, you know, they haven't had any prior teaching or prior coaches kind of mold them and box them in. So um, for me, I just talk with coaches, you know, instead of, you know, A, what are fundamentals? No one really has a succinct definition because they're always different. And B, it's just, it's, 
you know, instead of having these supposed things like being able to pass, like do a two hand chest pass, shoot with a perfect elbow straight in this position with a perfect textbook follow through, it's just can players have as many different solutions as possible during during different basketball possessions. Like for instance, can they dribble with in many different directions, as many different speeds, uh, different uh, you know, away from defenders coming at them? Can they? finish in different places around the backboard can they finish over different defenders and of course all these things are obviously uh completely influenced by the presence of constraints which are ever changing so therefore again it goes back to talking about practice and and what you're doing in practice and then instead of you know teaching all these techniques pokemon gotta catch them all it's more creating these small-sided games where all these all these concepts you know will just come to life and i think it's funny because again, it links back to a question you asked earlier in the podcast, Harry, about survivorship bias, the players getting better um, because of these drills they're doing. And no, it's in spite of it. And one coach the other day on my Twitter, I saw uh, responding to something and he, he used the Michael Jordan quote when Michael Jordan was talking about uh, fundamentals and he was saying, get the fundamentals down and everything else will rise. And it's like, you know, just because a famous player says it, and, and Larry Bird, MJ, Magic Johnson, yes, they were legends. They weren't legends because they did free man weave and static ball handling. It was in spite of all of that. <laughs>